Welcome to another episode of Judge for Soul. Rampant corruption is one of the greatest barriers to transforming our society. The fact of the matter is that we have very serious levels of corruption. One's not quite sure how many, many billions every year get dissipated, but the reality is that it's a major difficulty. And what is particularly concerning and what we want to actually focus on here is given these values of transparency and accountability in the Constitution, the institutions which are mandated to deal with that seem to be in turmoil. Both the head of the NPA and the Hawks now face removal. Claims are that the cases against them are politically motivated. Who knows? We need to talk about that. The special investigating unit is also without a head as Mr. Sony, Vassoni, has resigned to spend more time with his wife. Now, how do we then start to get a handle on corruption when the very institutions which are mandated to deal with this are in such turmoil. If you'd like to join the debate on Twitter, please use the hashtag JFYCorruption. To discuss this topic, I'm joined by Gliss Breitenbach, who's a former prosecutor, part of the NPA, now MP for the DA on the Justice Committee, Steve Swat, MP for the ACDP, and longest serving member on the Justice Committee. And in Johannesburg, we're joined by Dr. Ntoli Mutsecha, ANC MP, and the chairperson of the Justice Committee in Parliament. Let me start with you, Dr. Mutsecha. There's got to be a public concern here. I mean, these institutions are critical, but we've got no leaders now. Uh, uh, the public concern is uh, understandable when you have uh, a situation where public representative represented in parliament given the authority by the constitution to uh, interrogate to call for evidence uh, go on an extra parliamentary campaign uh, to actually discredit the very institution whereas their duty should be to explain and give the facts uh, to the public so uh, they conduct themselves in a way that creates the impression that uh, there is turmoil well, uh, can, for can instance I, I accept that if, but I, I, I want to get there and I want to give you every opportunity but isn't there turmoil period you cannot talk of turmoil when you have uh, an institution which is run by human beings and uh, if one of the heads resigns because uh, he has family challenges obviously there will be no it will be headless because uh, the individual has resigned i accept but that what that about general Dramat and term. the npa uh, you see, the government has a responsibility to ensure that uh, any person who heads these institutions uh, is beyond uh, reproach. And if there is reasonable suspicion that uh, something is wrong uh, with an individual, the government has the right All to right. institute an inquiry. And uh, instituting an inquiry doesn't constitute uh, turmoil. All right. Well, what do you say, Ms. Blakenberg? <laughs> well, frankly, I'm astonished. Uh, if, the, uh, if the heads of those uh, departments need to be beyond reproach, and I agree that they should be, uh, one only has to look at the president and uh, assume that he too should be beyond reproach to run the country. However, we are not dealing with the president in this program. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with two organizations. The, the president so is, stick to that. The president is the person who appoints I accept the that. two heads of no. these two okay. organizations. So, he appoints Mutoli Mutsolisi uh, Mkosana uh, 18 months ago. Ten months into his tenure, he announces that he's going to have an inquiry into his fitness to hold office because of ostensibly two previous convictions that are 20 years old for assault common, for which he got a fine, which denotes the seriousness of the assault. And we all know that a, a simple telephone call would have ascertained whether he had a criminal record or not. So clearly the president didn't bother to do a background check before he appointed the man into this very important position. Okay, so let's assume that the president got poor legal advice. Because I'm assuming presidents don't do this all themselves, they get advisors. The question is, what's he supposed to do then? 
well, he should, uh, first of all, fire those people who are giving him legal advice, and clearly he hasn't. Uh, secondly, having learnt a very expensive lesson at the taxpayer's expense with the Menzies and Milani matter, he already knew what the requirements were okay. and should have been a little more diligent in this appointment. Uh, similarly with Anwar Dramat, he's uh, now said that he's not fit to hold the job that he holds. Uh, Robert McBride has come on record publicly to say that, he, that the report, the IPA report cleared him of something that happened many, many months ago. Now it's suddenly a reason to suspend the man. Uh, really, there's certainly more to this Can than meets the eye. I accept that, but let me now put that to Dr. Mutsekha, but let me ask you this. What Dr. Mutsekha is also, I think, suggesting is that this should these processes now have been clouded by what he regards as extra-parliamentary uh, campaigns, which I assume means that we read in our newspapers every day something different, whereas Parliament's really supposed to deal with these questions. Isn't that right? Well, absolutely, and that's why we uh, in the Justice Portfolio Committee need to look into this. We, um, the NPA comes and reports to us, although they have a degree of independence, but there is that Yacoub report that the NDPP um, requested, I would say let's look into this report. It's had some damning well, findings. Have you, have you had a committee that. meeting have, where you've done that? We have not yet, and I think that, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Macheka would agree with me, that that is something that we can really look into because it goes to the heart of the problems and the factionalism within the, N, within the NPA generally. And I think that is, that is a, constitution, a retired constitutional court judge, and I think we need, as a matter of urgency, to consider that report. Dr. Motsecha, can I just ask you about that, uh, since it's been raised? We read that there is a report which is available from one of the most distinguished constitutional court judges this country's had, Mr. Justice Yacoub, which makes some very damning findings. Is that going to go before the Justice Committee so that the matter will be properly aired in Parliament? You know, I think we need to be observant of a, a rule of law which says uh, no one must be a judge in their own cause. You have a situation where the head of the NPA has commissioned a report. Uh, the report is damning on his colleagues. Uh, now uh, you have uh, a situation where the president has appointed a commission to look into the fitness or otherwise of the head of uh, NPA. Now, uh, if you have such a situation, if you want to look at the report and come to some determination, you may find that uh, you don't have a full picture. And also here you are dealing with uh, the head of the NPA, has rights and uh, the other persons that have been investigated into uh, have rights uh, and we don't even know what their responses are to uh, this report. So right. I think when we deal with state affairs, we must not conduct ourselves as if we are in a state of emergency because we'll make serious problems. But, but can I just ask you this? Justice Yacoub suggests that there should be a full-blown commission of inquiry into the whole of the NPA, not just into the national director, but into Ms. Jiba, Mr. Mruweni, etc. He's raised those questions. Surely, as a responsible committee of parliament, you must be mandated to investigate that. Not suggesting that you say he's right or wrong, but to investigate. You know, uh, I think that uh, we should be actually asking one question. What are the sources of this demand for a full inquiry? Because I don't think that Honorable Breitenbach would be a credible person uh, who can convince us that there is such a need. Because uh, if we do, we would be allowing her to be a judge in her, in her I, home I'll, I'll court. ask her to reply, she ask has, this, but what about Honorable Yacoub? Uh, Honorable Yacoub has made his investigation. Uh, we respect him, he's a man of integrity. But you see, if you make a report on behalf of government, 
you don't at the same time decide for government. Okay. Government will have to apply its mind to the report and then uh, decide what action I got to take. I, I have to, I mean, Dr. Wojciech, I'm sorry we, to interrupt you. I have to take a break and I promise you I'll give you an opportunity once I return.